What we have here is a 1926 Leedy Indianapolis snare drum. It is nickel over brass, a snare drum that's notable in that it is the first modern snare drum and i say that for a couple of reasons first of all up to this point all snare drums were made to size they were made 14 inches it was 14 inches ug leedy and george way both had the idea that possibly if you took the drum and you undersized it you could let that head float over now in the old days you had calfskin heads they would bind to the shell so on the original early ludwig say and the early leedy's when you used a single flange hoop the head would be tucked really tight against the shell itself and at times would bind and it would make the drum sound lousy. So what Leedy and George Way came up with was this floating head design. So they made the shell undersized. Uh, as opposed to Ludwig, they made their shell as a one-piece, and they had two grooves, top and bottom, that were there designed for the reinforcement. Basically what the Ludwigs did with their center bead, adding extra strength to the shell, but they did it top and bottom. If you look at a modern I say modern 1960s, 70s, Rogers Dynasonic. It's almost the same shell design. Here's a couple of other notable things. During this time, the snare drums up to this point, almost all of them had tube lugs straight through. Now, it's very popular today to have tube lugs, but at the time, that was all you had, really. You had that and you had rope. So you took your choice. So they developed the first lugs, basically. They invented the lug. And in this particular version, this is the second version of that lug. They call it the four-screw lug. It had the ability to adjust a little bit side to side to accommodate for maybe some imperfections in the manufacturing or I don't know what they were thinking because they they made their stuff spot on. They didn't have any wiggle room on the rims. The hole that goes through the rim is just a hole. It's not an oval. It's a, it's a round hole and it's small and it just fits tension rod. And the tension rod is another thing. At this particular point, Ludwig was already using the modern tension rod with the modern thread and modern thickness. Leedy was using a smaller version of this, and it gave you more threads per turn. So you actually had more tensioning ability with the Leedy at this particular time. They also had the um, key tension tension rods. And with the key tension tension rods, of course, you know, the idea was that you could use a coin to tune your drums if you forgot your key. Well, that, that idea stayed until about 1930 or so, maybe even before that that they switched over to what Ludwig was doing, and Slingerland for that matter at that point. Uh, this is a great drum, and I hope you enjoy it. And here you go. Mm-hmm. 